Texas, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. Woo! We're here. What's up? We're here. Still here. 75 years later. 75 years later. That's, yeah. that's been a minute, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know where we start from here. Well, you've already you've already let us in, man. Yeah, I guess so. Seventy five years later <laughs> no from small what? Talk this time. <laughs> um, okay, so yesterday was the seventy fifth anniversary of uh, the United States dropping the uh, atomic, the first atomic bomb yeah. used in war um, on Hiroshima. Okay, um, yeah, that would be August sixth um, okay. was the anniversary. Um, and then a couple of days from now, August 9th, will be the anniversary of the last atomic bomb. Oh, wow. Dropped so, on anybody in war. I didn't realize, I was fixing to ask, I didn't realize there was that much space between the two. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was a few days. Wow. Um, there's some controversy surrounding that, too. Yeah. Uh, because, well, I mean, just to get right into it, um, the, uh, if you can make the argument that the first bomb was necessary. Was justified. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to make the argument that the second one was. Yeah. I mean, were they already in negotiations by the time they dropped the second one? I mean, I, I mean I, I, I'm kind of, I, I don't have a lot of knowledge on some of this, so I like the details, so I'm curious. Well, um, really, Japan had, wa- had lost the war and was aware of it before the first one was dropped. Yeah. Um, that's... I mean, that's the justification I always remember from school was that that the war ended quicker by dropping the bomb, that they were going to lose anyway, but that they were fighting to the bitter end, mm-hmm. and, and this was a way to speed up the end of the war. Yeah, um, and the other part of that argument is that it saved uh, yeah, yeah. hundreds of thousands of American lives. And that's, yeah, like you said, that's where it goes from there. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, George H.W. Bush said it, it saved a million American lives, which I don't know where he got that number from. But, uh, you know. It's, I mean, if we're just making up numbers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I figure it's like the, you know, the big fish tales, right? Like the the, the yeah. more years pass between the beginning of that fish tale, the bigger that the fish bigger gets. The bigger it gets, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's certainly some question about um, whether uh, it was necessary at all. Yeah. Um, I, I would, I, I mean, I think it's pretty clear the that it didn't save lives on the whole. Yeah. Um, oh well, there's no question. I don't think you could really argue that it did, as far as that goes. I yeah. Mean, it um, was really more of a if at best it would be a trade their lives for ours. Right. Um, there were somewhere between a hundred thousand and a quarter million Japanese killed between the two bombs. Yeah. Um, it's a whole lot of lives. Yeah. It is. Um, and I, you know, I suspect that it's probably closer to the higher end of that. Yeah. Um, I would guess that it was probably roughly around 200,000, um, and uh, you know the even Truman at the time said that they uh, you know the first one was dropped on a military base at Hiroshima, yeah. uh, which isn't true. Uh, there was some military production going on there. Um, I think that there were some troops there, although I don't recall specifically. Uh, but it was primarily a civilian city. Yeah. Um, and he said that saying that they didn't want to to take civilian lives, but most of the lives taken were civilian. Yeah. Well, when you're dropping a weapon of that magnitude, there's really how many places can you drop a weapon like that that you're not going to take civilian lives? Yeah. Well, um, they could have dropped it on a fleet. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> and that's true. Just to show the power of what it could do. You yeah. Know, like, well, that's the other thing is that they could have just set one off. Yeah. On some, you know, little island out in the Pacific and said, hey, just look. Just completely destroy this island. Yeah, make it not <laughs> an island anymore. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, we will do this to your city in nine days. <laughs> yeah, exactly, unless you surrender. Yeah. And uh, the the truth is that for months um, beforehand, the Japanese had been trying to get a peace deal. Yeah. Um, and essentially, their only real demand about the whole thing is that they get to keep their emperor. Um, But the U S was pushing for an unconditional surrender, whatever that means. Whatever. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And uh, the, you know, the Japanese were just trying to save face. And of course at that time, the emperor was supposed to be representative of, of was like God on earth. Yeah. Um, To them. Right. Which is the reason you had just kamikazes all over the place. Well, I mean, that's, that's certainly part of it. There's, 
I mean, there's a cultural deal about about duty and um, sacrifice of self for community and so forth too. Okay. I mean, there's yeah. you know, there's more to it than just God told me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God on the TV today told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, the well. The U.S. was intent on the unconditional surrender, even though in the end they did let them keep the emperor. Really? Um, yeah. So it seems that they, the U.S. actually dragged the war on for months Yeah. Um, when they could have gotten what they wanted out of it uh, and the Japanese could have saved face. Yeah. Um, but they, the U.S. government essentially ignored all the requests for uh, a peace deal. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, you know, I, I don't know how you... Well, something that's really striking about it is that even some of the great military leaders of the time um, were opposed to dropping the bomb. Uh, yeah. that as, you know, either immoral or unnecessary. Yeah. Um, you know, notably Dwight Eisenhower, later President yeah. Eisenhower, um, was opposed to dropping the bomb. Uh, the Admiral Nimitz, who was in charge of the Pacific Fleet, who's you know a much storied admiral in in U.S. military history, um, uh, he's actually one of the people that noted that the Japanese had been suing for peace before the announcement of the new weapon um, or the Russian entry into the war. That was the other thing that they said. Well, you know, between the Russian entering the the Russians entering the war against Japan. And you know, because they were already at yeah, war but, in Europe, but they yeah. they entered the war against Japan, and the um, the announcement of the nuclear weapon, or the the yeah. announcement being the first bomb exploding. The, yeah, actually. right. Yeah, um, it's not like they made like a proclamation or whatever. Well, I mean, they did say that they had a new weapon, or yeah, there there is some. I mean, and they also claim to have dropped leaflets, but uh, the information that I've gotten about that was that the leaflets were dropped after the bomb. So oh, if really? you somehow managed to survive the atomic bomb, then you would know that, uh, well... Hey, it, here it comes. A, it was a, yeah, it was a brand new weapon that was used on you um, yeah. yesterday in a couple of days yeah. uh, right. or something. Um, and uh, I think, notably, uh, Curtis LeMay, who who really didn't have a problem killing civilians, who made that very clear yeah. um, and didn't wasn't opposed to the bomb because of any kind of moral qualms, yeah. Um, about attacking civilians, uh, said in a um, in a, a press conference of a sort of some kind. I mean, the the way I read the transcript, it was you know uh, press asking questions. So I'm not sure what the f- the formal what the forum uh, was. setting was. Yeah. But um, anyway, he said, and I quote: "The atomic bomb had nothing to do with the end of the war at all." End quote. Yeah. Um, that the Japanese would have would have surrendered would have had a surrender within a couple of weeks that yeah. there would have never been an invasion of Japan anyway because they would have surrendered before that yeah. um, that the war was over and remember uh, like you talk about the the destruction of the atomic bomb which obviously is significant yeah. um, but it's significant in the fact that it only took two bombs to kill a quarter million people um, yeah. the uh, not quite a quarter million people. I'm exaggerating now. Yeah, um, well, uh, yeah. that fish is getting bigger. <laughs> maybe a couple hundred. Yeah, uh, maybe a couple hundred thousand people. Um, but we'd been f- uh, the U.S. had been firebombing Japan uh, for a couple of months, I guess. Oh, really? Beforehand, um, easily killing as many. Yeah. Uh, it just took a lot more sorties to do so. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And they had, um, you know, essentially burned down Tokyo. Uh, already, um, they had been attacking the Japanese infrastructure uh, the entire time, and yeah. in in some sense, like by today's standards, that would have been a war of terror. Yeah, like that they're they're burning down these cities, firebombing these cities. Well, and that's I'm not super educated on like what's a war crime and what's not, kind of like we were talking before the podcast. But it just seems to me using these weapons anyway would have to be a war crime, like it, just a because of the mass of amount of casualties you're going to have, and there's no way to control whether they're military or civilian, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I think that that's the big question for us: is the is, you know, can you under any circumstances really justify the use of atomic weapons? Yeah. Um, against a country. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I mean, you know, there are. 
possibilities to really limit civilian casualties, like bombing a fleet out in the middle of the ocean, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but something if, like that, you may can justify that. But at the same time, it's kind of over overkill. Like it seems like to be more productive way to not maybe not more productive, but I don't know. It just seems like cheaper. overkill. You can send kamikazes. Yeah, it's cheaper. <laughs> it is cheaper. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what the Japanese were doing. Yeah, so. depending on how you value human life. Yeah. Um, no, I think that there's there's a couple of things that factor in. Uh, I saw an interview with somebody whose name I can't remember, um, but who was in, you know, uh, involved with the talks about whether to use the weapon or not, and um, he said that a, at least a part of it was it was a political calculation. Yeah. Um, that they had a, an election coming up um, in, well, I guess the next year, right? Yeah. 46 would have been the election, I think. Is that right? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. Don't know. Don't anyway, yeah. um, the, but there would be an election. Yeah. No, I guess it would have been 48 would have been the next election. Anyway, yeah. um, and he said, you know, it would come up as a topic on the campaign trail when Truman was running for re-election. Uh, because obviously the information that this bomb had been available at some point would have Was, come out. Would have come out, yeah. And uh, so it would have become a, a talking point that every, um, you know, mother, father, wife, etc., of a, a military man that died after whatever date it could have been deployed um, yeah. could have been saved if Truman had only made this decision. And yeah. and we see that kind of talk on the campaign trail still today. Oh, yeah. Um that's true. But, you know, the idea that there's a political calculation on whether to do something like this is kind of frightening in and of itself. Yeah, but all of these decisions end up, for the most part, come down to political calculations, yeah, for, uh, at true. least a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. you know? I, I think that that's probably true, but um, you would like to at least believe that... Somebody were, would do what was right despite what the consequences politically could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, we don't live in that type of system. So. Well, I don't think that there is that type of system. No, actually. I would I mean, agree. Uh, it, you don't reach that level of power by being a nice guy. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it is. And by not taking in those type of like calculations you yeah, know yeah. i mean there's there's i mean there may not always be lives on the line but you're always kind of making those mm -hmm. decisions based off how it's going to be react or received in the public yeah um there is the the uh um psychological evidence that a great many like a really high proportion of politicians are sociopaths yeah <laughs> um i have no trouble believing that no no yeah. um but uh yeah I, I mean i think that there it is a good question like whether you could ever justify the use of a weapon like this um now there is an argument to be made that since world war ii it the existence of these weapons has maintained a sort of peace yeah. um you haven't had major powers go to war with go each at other. it like yeah um and I suppose that there's something to be said for that, but you know the whole mutually assured destruction <laughs> paradigm um, works until it doesn't. Yeah, well, that's and that's exactly <laughs> at some point, especially when you have sides pushing against each other the way they are right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's particular. It seems particularly bad right now, but. Um, if you think back to after the bomb was dropped, I mean, everybody was paranoid that this was going to happen at any time. You yeah, know? we were still doing duck and cover drills when I was in school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, that was a complete waste of time, obviously. Like, you're not going to hide <laughs> under a desk from an atomic bomb. Yeah. Um, but it know. gives you something to do. <laughs> exactly. It's like a fire drill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I think uh, I've brought it up on this podcast a few times before. I'm actually concerned about that people don't think about this anymore. Yeah. Um, and something that, you know, probably a lot of Americans don't realize is that the U S still has a first use policy. Really? Yeah. Um, the, the United States is still willing to, to use nuclear weapons before somebody else does. Yeah. Um, That's scary. One of these, uh, I can't remember which one, like one of these high military officials at the time of the, or, you know, after the, um, the atomic bomb was dropped, uh, saying, said something along the lines of, um, using this weapon against others 
without, you know, first essentially yeah. like brings us down to the moral level of barbarians. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but uh, the U.S. is still obviously the only country that's ever used an atomic weapon against another country. And the U.S. still has a first use policy, which is not, uh, yeah. <laughs> not the standard. Yeah. Um, and so they're, and you hear them bring it up from time to time. Like, this is a big threat that we use against some of these nations like Iran yeah. as a, as a prime example. Oh yeah. Um, that we have, the you know, U.S. government has been explicit for many years that they would use a nuclear weapon against Iran before Iran even had the power to, to create a nuclear weapon of their own just to prevent them from getting a nuclear weapon. <laughs> yeah. I want to say that Trump had mentioned some stuff about that. At some, I don't remember specifics now. Yeah. But that like that, that had been tossed around, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Well, and you know um, who just took over as the envoy to Iran or whatever is Elliot Abrams. Oh, is uh, it really? I yeah, who's that. been the special envoy to for Venezuela in <laughs> in our attempts to overthrow Maduro over the last several years, yeah. and was uh, you know chief head of death squads in um, Latin America, you know, many years ago. I was going to say, this, this, is is guy. this guy's kind of like war guy, right? Yeah, this like, guy. He, if we're gearing is, up for a war somewhere, we're sending him in. <laughs> yeah, this is, and of course, this is this is the guy who was of Iran-Contra fame, mm -hmm. where um, we were uh, siding with Iraq against Iran, but still selling Iran weapons through um, the Israelis uh, and... Um, and essentially using the money that we got for the weapons to uh, support these uh, right-wing death squads in Central America. Wow. <laughs> like, and he was a big part of this, yeah. this whole scandal. Yeah. Um, and that's who's now, now our now chief <laughs> negotiator with Iran. <laughs> I'm sure they love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, got a little off topic there. Uh, mm. There there was something else that I wanted to point out specifically about that, but I, I think it's probably worth it just to linger for a moment on the first use policy. Yeah. Um, th just the idea that we're still at this point willing to, to drop an atomic bomb on somebody without them... Doing it to us. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Right. And, uh, of course, we're not, you know... You and I aren't of the position that you wait for somebody to hit you before you hit them back. Oh, um, no question. But the the fact of the matter is that the U.S. has by far the strongest conventional military in the world. Yeah. Um, and that we don't actually even need atomic weapons to level most countries in the world. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, the conventional weapons we have and, and yeah. the just the might that we have militarily. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, it's not it's not a stretch. It's not hard. Uh, it's the perils of dominance, right? That if you don't have anybody that can hit back as hard, then you're much more willing to throw punches. Yeah. Um. And it, it, if you think about uh, Russia and China as military peers, um, it might be helpful for me to point out that we spend five times as much on our military as the Chinese spend on theirs and 10 times as much on our military as the Russians spend on theirs. Wow. I knew it was a lot, but that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's um, crazy. We spend close to a trillion dollars on the military every year. Yeah. that That's of a $4 trillion budget. <laughs> right. No, that's yeah. insane. And three and a half trillion dollars in revenue. Yeah. Which is... Also probably worth pointing out <laughs> from time to time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there there is a real danger here, and I, I just want to keep reminding people of that. Um, I think it's important because these, you know, what was the um, Chris Ann Hall quote? Uh, Lost lessons must be repeated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. This is one that we really don't want to repeat. No. And especially now, like the, the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki – are minuscule compared to the bombs that we've developed at this point. Um, oh, yeah. The I mean, those were simple atomic bombs. Um, the right now, the U.S. and Russia each have roughly seven thousand hydrogen bombs, which are, you know, thermonuclear bombs, which are yeah. much bigger, way larger. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, and this is a country that we're trying to provoke. It seems <laughs> some yeah, kind and of. And you think that's just man? That's so many of those weapons. Like yeah, that's that's just incredible to yeah. even just wrap your head around. There's that many of them out there. Mm-hmm. Well, know? and uh, if, <laughs> for reference, the Chinese have about three hundred. Do they really? Um, yeah. That's more than enough to. Oh, yeah. Well, to you, end the United States. Oh, without question. Yeah. And possibly even, you know, end human civilization as we know it because the, of the fallout and yeah, uh, you, nuclear if, winter. If you the just, like, if you aftermath. just, like, wanted to destroy the planet, like, I think you could do it with 300. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I would, I'm no, I'm no expert, but it seems logical. Yeah. <laughs> well, you couldn't destroy the planet exactly, but yeah. you could certainly put a real dent in life civilization <laughs> yeah and you, you could end civilization as we know it yeah I think, and that's really when i say destroy the planet that's kind of what i mean yeah. civilization like i mean civilization they'll probably make yeah. it we might not yeah if civilization <laughs> is gone i'm you know let's call it yeah <laughs> like yeah. doesn't really matter to me if the earth makes it if civilization don't well the cockroaches disagree with you <laughs> well <laughs> I've never been on the side of the cockroaches, so yeah, that's, <laughs> just just bear that in mind. That's fair. <laughs> um, so uh, that's all I wanted. I just, uh, yeah. you know, there's a lot of information out there for people, especially right now. Um, and enough time has passed that if you can avoid the government-sponsored stuff, you'll find some real critical reviews of the use of the bomb. Yeah. Um, and uh, there is a tremendous amount of evidence that it was absolutely unnecessary and like i said even if you somehow manage to justify the hiroshima bomb uh justifying the nagasaki bomb is infinitely harder well i i know i had watched some stuff yesterday where they were um talking about the first one and i I didn't know how long was between them and i just kind of think about it in terms of okay that happened a couple of days ago we're still a couple of days away Mm -hmm. or a little ways away from the next one it just Thinking about it in those terms to me is just kind of like this seems like a lot of time, for like such a a major thing happening, and then the space mm-hmm. between the next one. Yeah. You well, know. and you got to remember too that at the time the U.S. had cut communication in a. So the first thing that happens when you go to war with somebody apparently is you cut you off quit all talking. communication <laughs> with them. Let's quit negotiation <laughs> and negotiate with our armies. <laughs> yeah, so they were um I, I mean even the the initial requests for some kind of peace plan from the Japanese were going through Switzerland. Really? Um yeah, yeah, their representatives in Switzerland were trying to use you know, get in touch with the representatives of the U S and Switzerland. <laughs> um, and then the, they, the, you know, the Swiss representatives were talking to the Americans and the Americans were saying, ignore them, you know, yeah, is kind of how it went. And in three days after the first bomb fell, I mean, you got to think that they're probably, uh, the, I mean, even though there was an emperor, there's still like a, a bureaucracy. There's still a government of, yeah. of other people that are trying to make decisions. Um, you have to think that they probably were still arguing over how they were going to do it. Like, yeah. all right, you know, what kind of surrender, you know, what are we going to, what are we willing to do here? Yeah. 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 What's our line? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so while they're still arguing over how they're going to surrender, we drop another bomb and it yeah. just, yeah, it just it just, just seems so unnecessary yeah. to me. Um, and in order to ensure unconditional surrender, but then in the end we gave them exactly w- what they wanted before we dropped the bomb. Yeah. And there's a there's a strong argument that we, you know, there was already uh, something of a rivalry um, developing between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. And yeah. so there's been plenty of people who have made the case that the reason that we dropped the bomb on Japan is so that Russia would see it. Yeah. And I, you know, I think that probably did play into a lot of it Mm -hmm. Um, just because so they know that, hey, we have this now. Yeah. Well, it wasn't long before they had their own, too. But well, no, but at the same time, you know, yeah, and you have first. Yeah. (laughs) And you have to know, though, that when you develop a weapon like this, that you're not going to be the only one with it for long. Yeah. Um, But the you know, another part of the Russia thing is that they had just entered the war uh, against Japan as well. And so there's also an argument made that we dropped the bomb so that Russia couldn't take any credit for the defeat of Japan yeah, and not be a part of the negotiating of how, how to end, you know, or, or what kind of terms to give Japan, especially since Russia is in a position to actually take territory there. 
Yeah, right. That's their neighbor, right? Yeah. Close I mean, it's it. just yeah. off the coast. Yeah. It's not just off the coast, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still their hemisphere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a whole lot closer to Russia than it is to the U.S. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we took plenty of territory in that in that yeah. war, too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess enough of that. On a lighter note. Yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> we, we want to take on our next subject, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Moving um, on. Moving on. So, yeah. Um, Trump signed an executive order. I think he actually, there's been a lot of talk about it all week, but um, I think he actually signed the order yesterday um, to ban TikTok providing, I guess he gave them 45 days to, um, they have to find a U.S. buyer in 45 days or TikTok <clears throat> will be banned. Now, however, that the logistics of that work, I mean, it seems kind of crazy that you can ban an app. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and the whole reason in a, in a supposedly free country, it seems crazy yeah. that you would be. Oh, able to yeah. Well, that's exactly that. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like in in this country, like that that something that could happen. Yeah. But, um. Apparently, that's where we're. They at. do that kind of thing in China. Well, yeah, in China all the time. And this is a China-owned company. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the company that owns TikTok is China, and that's 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 where like the negotiation is. So mm-hmm. either there's 45 days, either a U.S. company buys the app, or it's banned. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, it just amazes me that that's something that, I mean, I guess, I guess they've got enough lawyers with these executive orders that they know what they're allowed to do and what they're not, but it just doesn't <laughs> seem legal. <laughs> well, no, it's not about knowing what you're allowed to do and what you're not. It's what you can put enough text onto a piece of paper to justify, justify in some it. roundabout way yeah. that would at least make it difficult for somebody else to make to overturn overturn your decision yeah Yeah. so which i know that there's lawyers aren't about upholding the law they're about explaining why they're able to breach it yeah (laughs) fair enough (laughs) i mean that definitely that jives (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah um i'll just say from my own personal experience that my house has been Insane with the news that TikTok may be going away. <laughs> with your two um, girls? Yes. They are They are very much... They don't post a lot on TikTok, but they're on it a lot. Mm-hmm. They watch a lot of videos, and, and, and they use the app quite a bit. Yeah. Well, um, this is... Uh, okay, so this gives an opportunity. I've been thinking a lot about the terms um, yeah. recently. Just nomenclature. And uh, I, I'm... We're going to make it a policy on this podcast to be very explicit about what we mean. Okay. So um, we're not going to talk about capitalism, the kind of capitalism that we like anymore. We're not going to use the word capitalism anymore. Okay. We're going to say free market or free enterprise. Okay. I like that. And when we're talking about the kind of capitalism that we don't like, this kind of capitalism, we're not going to call it, you know, bad capitalism or whatever. Yeah. Um, we're, and we're definitely not going to call it capitalism anymore. <laughs> Fair um, enough. We're going to call it cronyism. Cronyism. Oh, I like cronyism. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what, and that's what we really have in general, as far yes. as I'm concerned. Yes. But, um, and that's the, I don't know if I mentioned it, but that's the flip side of this is that mm-hmm. Microsoft a while back had already expressed interest in buying TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's yes, they had, and they weren't getting the kind of terms that they wanted. Yep. And then Trump said that he was considering banning TikTok. Yeah. Um, and TikTok has something like a hundred million U.S. users. I think oh, more than half of their users are yeah, are in the U.S. They are. Um, it's it's massive. Um, and and there's a lot of people just like so. I don't use TikTok. I don't. I know very little about it other than I get sent videos by my children periodically mm-hmm. of stuff I have. Oh my God, got to watch off TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but a lot of people. There, there's a lot of content creators on TikTok. A lot of people mm-hmm. are um, um, making a living off you know posting yeah. and and doing videos on TikTok. Yeah. So you can think about that how you will because yeah. i don't know about that but but the truth Honestly, is most of what i've seen a, is stupid teenagers talking about how terrible america is and well, there's a lot of that mm-hmm. um in fact i heard an npr thing today where they were saying that the the end of the the thing i saw on npr was somebody joked yeah the reason trump wants to ban it is because nobody on there likes him or something yeah, like uh, that th- <laughs> there might be some truth to that there there may be but um 
No, the, I think that he was trying to secure better terms for Microsoft. I think that's exactly what it is. Um, and, you know, so essentially, because uh, the big concern, of course, is that the, you know, this Chinese company is spying on Americans for the Chinese government. So what they want is for Microsoft to buy it so that they can spy on Americans for the American government. Well, and that's, and that's exactly it. That's mm-hmm. exactly the point. Is like, cause, and all of these companies are doing that, all of these app companies. I mm-hmm. mean, they've got, I mean, They've got access to all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, well, and, uh, you know, as much as I hate to admit it, it seems to me um, that the company that's best about actually, like, treating your personal information as personal information yeah. is Apple. Yeah. Um, they, but the rest of them, they're just more than happy to sell your information off no, to whoever. And Apple, I don't think, is perfect when it comes to No, that. I don't think so either. But, but they're be- they're probably the best in the industry. Yeah, at least of the major, yeah. major well, yeah, players. Well, yeah, your major yeah. players for sure. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, Microsoft is one of the worst. But yeah, uh, uh, the truth is, and as sad as this is, is I think people just don't care. I yeah. don't. I don't think. And, and the thing about it is, is it's not. They don't see any repercussions of it immediate. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you know whatever. Like I mean, why bother? But I think down the line there could be large repercussions. Yeah, there's the, And I don't I don't even know what that may look like per se, mm-hmm. but just the idea that all of these companies have all of this information on everybody just sounds like a, a dangerous road. Yeah. But it's it's there's nothing that can be done about it I see at this point. Well, I, and here's the thing, actually, I don't have as much trouble with the companies having all this information if they weren't so willing to give, give it, it to, to the, the government. government. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's really the the sticking point and and i'm not a big fan of the companies having it but yeah you're right about the government like that's mm-hmm. that's really where the line's kind of drawn mm-hmm. um and if it's okay with you i'll i'd like to transition again unless you have yeah. something more to no, say no i mean that's really all i got on tiktok yeah. just that you know this is out there and it's happening and mm-hmm. you know yeah um, well, in terms of why I would be more concerned about the government having this information, um, mm. I uh, heard a story, I guess a couple of days ago now, um, that, of course, you know, California has gone back into lockdown um, if they ever let... Really let out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, uh, and by the way, people around the world, like, other than in the U.S., are yeah. protesting lockdown measures. Uh, well, we protesting were, against their governments in Germany, in France, and like all over. Well, the place. let me let, let's just make a quick point that when um, at the height of all the lockdowns, that was going on here too. Yeah, it was. Um, and before all, but those of the, protesters were killing people by being out, well, as that's, opposed that's, to the Black Lives Matter protesters that are saving lives. That's exactly the right. point I was getting ready to make. Is yeah. that you know, um, and those a lot of those protests were armed protests. I just like to throw that out there too. Mm-hmm. Um, just saying. Yeah. So were these. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so well, are the Black Lives Matter. Uh, some of, some of them are, which I'm okay with. I'm yeah. I'm actually okay with that. I think that's mm-hmm. the if you're gonna have a large protest, that you should be armed. Yeah. Um. I mean, it. it you have to be responsible. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I'm not saying to take out a bunch of guns and start killing folks, but I'm saying if if you want to keep the government off your back during your protest, that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Disagree. I mean, they're not going to tear gas a bunch of armed demonstrators. <laughs> I mean, they could. They might, <laughs> but it's not wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They would. They would think they about would, it a little. They would longer. think twice about it. Yeah, they would think about it a little longer. So. Well, anyway, um, in California, with all the restaurants, bars, and and every other bit of entertainment shut right. down, um, people are doing those kind of things at their homes. Um, so you know, some of the more affluent. Younger people that have gotten there probably through entertainment for the most part, <laughs> um, having huge parties at their places. And, you know, I'm lots sure of a lot of these and, are TikTok stars. Yeah. Well, some of them certainly. <laughs> well, I mean, there is a lot of social media stars that are doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Which is why it's so well known because they keep because tweeting out <laughs> pictures and so forth. Look uh, what's going on at the Sway House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the. Government has responded to this. They're very unhappy about it because how dare you invite people to your property um, and welcome them in uh, with all this going on? Don't you know there's supposed to be a lockdown? Yeah. And uh, so the interesting thing is that they, you know they have talked about cracking down, and so maybe when you hear that you think, okay, they're going to start um, you know issuing citations and. We well, see um, that's 
that's what I had thought. So when you brought this up to me earlier, fines and stuff. Yeah. They, I knew that this was going on, and I knew that there was talk of a crackdown, mm -hmm. but I didn't hear what you heard. Yeah, um, and then you you start to worry about arrests and things. Yeah, like that's that and that's what I thought. Like, and yeah. and I have a problem with that. Like, the police mm -hmm. coming onto your private property because you have too many people on it yeah. is a problem. I have a problem with that. Like that's a, that's an infringement. Yeah. And it's not the fire marshal that's doing this because it's, Oh yeah. Like, yeah, know. exactly. Um, it's not a crowded theater or whatever. Like <laughs> right. it's, it's my own private property yeah. with a dozen or so people or two dozen, whatever the case may or be. Or a hundred. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. As long as I got room to accommodate them. You well, know? that's the that's the problem, right? You don't have enough room for them to all to maintain six feet of distance between them. <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, that's <laughs> that, actually that, the argument. That's, that they're that's making. the argument. No, yeah. you're right. Um, so what they have decided to do or threatened to do yeah. now, I, and I don't know that even that they legally can, and they certainly shouldn't be able to. But um, the government has has threatened that they will start shutting off utilities to these. <laughs> <laughs> to these properties, that, shutting off power and water to these properties. That is insane. That is that is absolutely just. I'm going to use every weapon I have against these people. Like it's just. Yeah. It's. And so I I find this particularly interesting because that has always been the argument as to why, like the counter of that yeah. is the argument as to why the state should control utilities. Yeah is that you don't want these private companies deciding that they you know don't like somebody and shutting off their water. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> the, the private companies will... aren't doing this. <laughs> yeah. The government is. It, and yeah. the government isn't liable. Like you can't really do anything about like yeah. if, if, the... so if my electric company shut me off not because I didn't pay my bill but just because I got into an argument with the guy that came out to check my line or something like that. Yeah. Um then I have some recourse. Yeah. Uh but if the government does it there's nothing you can do. There's yeah. nobody. I mean, yeah, you can go to the government for a redress or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and let me know how that goes. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're already breaking down that right. Yeah. Um, yeah the petition the government for a redress of, of grievances. Yeah. Uh, that's all a part of the right to, or that's the follow up to the right to peaceably assemble in the First Amendment. Right? Yeah. And they're already they're they're tearing all of this down. Like your First oh, Amendment yeah. is about to no longer exist. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's scary, man. Go read it again. There's five things there. Five like really important things there. Yeah. Um, and every single one of them is being attacked. Yep. And so here we are now that they are are actually threatening to shut off power and water to citizens that aren't doing what they say. Yeah. Exactly. With it's, their own property. Yeah. And that's that's the insane thing is that you, mm -hmm. well, you can't even do what you want on your own property. That's yeah. just... And remember, this is the same entity that says that it is a right for you to have clean water. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, well, oh. It's just, it's authoritarianism at its worst, and it's it's scary. It's not quite man. the worst yet, but it's... it's well, it's getting there, though. Yeah. Like, And that's, that's what's so scary to me is you can... I mean, you you can see where the next step is. It's always yeah. going there with the SWAT team. I think is worse. Well, yeah, um, but we've already like that's that already happens. Yeah. Well, and that's just it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's always you know it's, I mean, this would have been, this would have been satire a year ago. That we're, yeah, that's probably true. I mean, it would have. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're gonna these people won't or these people won't so social distance, so we're gonna shut off their power and utilities. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> think if. Well, at least before Trump. Think if, yeah. um, because, you know, nothing's off limits with Trump. Trump would do anything, right? <laughs> right. I mean, he's yeah. literally a lot Hitler. Of, a lot of people believe that. Um, and <laughs> I love the Dave Smith bit. Like, I've heard that he's literally Hitler so many times that if he's anything less than Hitler, <laughs> then I'm going to think he did a pretty he good job. He did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that, that wasn't so bad. Well, he killed 30,000 people. Only 30,000. Only 30,000. <laughs> <Right? laughs> yeah, yeah. um, but anyway, like, if before Trump, somebody had said, uh, well, you can't, if somebody had been proposing to me that the government should control, um, that the government should control and my argument that all utilities should be privately owned and there should be competition and so forth. Yeah. Um, now I'm not entire, I think that the government actually owns the utilities in California here. They are privately owned, but they're government enforced they're, monopolies. Yep. Exactly. Um, so it may as well just be the government that controls it. Yeah. Um, because, of course, if you're that private company that has the government monopoly 
uh, on the area, you probably need to do what the government says, yeah. or some other company will soon have that monopoly. Yeah, if, exactly. If right. the government comes in and is like, you shut off 203, like, yeah. they're shutting off 203. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's not my address, by the way. Uh, yeah. um, sure. But, uh, it, yeah, if you had said, uh, if I had responded to somebody saying that the state should control uh, the el- electric grid um, by saying, well, you don't want the state to have control because what if you upset the state and they just shut off your power? They they would have said, oh, that's a ridiculous argument. No state would, like, that yeah, wouldn't that happen would never in this country. Happen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And here we and are. And it may never happen. It may not. But the the, the whole I- The whole there. idea that it's been put out there, though, is mm-hmm. enough. Yeah. To, to have you worried, at least. Yeah. Concerned. Yeah, the threat is there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So don't let your government control anything is the moral of the story. <laughs> right. That, that might be the moral of the podcast. I think that's a podcast theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get the government out of everything. Yes. Yeah. So. Get the government out of everything. Yeah. That should be uh, under our logo. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you know. Add that to the list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Personal liberty, free enterprise, self-government, and get the government out of everything. <laughs> I think uh, that has a bit of a ring to it. <laughs> we'll write a song. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I mean, that's all I really had uh, yeah, to I talk about. Uh, sorry there wasn't the level of detail that you may have gotten used to on this podcast um, tonight. Uh, I've had uh, family in town and have not spent a lot of time reading or... Um, <laughs> yeah, well, doing any of that hasn't been a lot better for me. I I literally live at my job now. So. Yeah, not literally, but almost. <laughs> you don't get, sleep I, there. I get not much. <laughs> <laughs> so some, some people listen to this, right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> oh no. So um, we plan to be back in a week. Um, yeah. Hopefully, with air conditioning in Mike's house. Well, the air conditioning works. It's just it's just hot as the the problem's the insulation, not the AC. <laughs> I'm telling you, but I, I am supposed to have an AC guy coming a week, so Woo-hoo. or not AC. Sorry, now you got me confused. <laughs> now I got, I got you. I got an insulation up. guy coming in a week that's supposed to restore my insulation. Um, now the problem there could be that I, you know, they're going to be up in my attic all day. Yeah. Uh, so it may be hotter in here when we start. Oh, I don't know if I can. I don't know, man. I don't know if I can deal with much. We might as well do it outside at that point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. It's only 15 <laughs> degrees hotter outside yeah, right. and far more humid. Yeah. Um, but barring anything else, um, we plan to be back in a week uh, when we finally get this right. In the meantime, um, you know, follow us, uh, su- subscribe, like and share, and so on and so on, and um, try and stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.